Okay, do I like start like now or? Yeah, anytime. So you're recording. Okay, three, two, one. Hey everyone, in today's episode, we will be discussing the difficult question of, will we ever be enough? In exploring this question, we hope to cover the areas of self-love, peer pressure, social media, and physical alterations, among others. We will be sharing our perspectives on why some people feel that they're not good enough and how those who feel like that can overcome such feelings. Therefore, Melissa and I have Hui Yan as our guest in today's podcast session. So first things first, let's allow Hui Yan to introduce herself. And might she also add, how is she doing? Hi guys, so I'm Hui Yan and I'm a first year quantitative social science student um, at the University of Sheffield. So right now everything's um, pretty all right, I guess. I bet all of you are um, pretty stressed with assignments and exams because it's exam season now, as I am. So yeah, that's it. Okay, so let's oh. move to the question then. Let's get to the core of today's podcast session. So as our guest today, do you share with us, um, what is your definition of self-love? Um, my definition of self-love is just basically taking care of yourself, both mentally and physically, to ensure that you're happy, right? And most importantly, um, to be satisfied with yourself, right? So loving yourself because of your flaws instead of despite it. Being comfortable in your own body, knowing that, yes, I am not perfect and that's okay. I'm comfortable with that. I'll continue to take care of myself, you know, and improve. What about you, Val? Like, is that a definition that you share? Yeah, um, yeah. With your personal self-love. Yeah, I think very similar to what Huyen has said. So, for me, self-love is an unconditional love for yourself, right? No matter, no matter what happens. So, okay, I'll try to I'll try to contrast it with with self-esteem. So, I, I think mm-hmm. that self-esteem is a kind of confidence that you achieve, but it's somehow conditional. Where like, yes, I self-esteem is like, yes, you love yourself because uh, either mm-hmm. you've achieved something or because you have stuck to your values. So there's all the ifs, like, you know, if you have achieved something. But then self-love is like, it's a concept. Okay, to be honest, it's a concept that I feel I understand, but mm-hmm. I don't feel like I practice it because yeah. I, I, I don't feel like I'm there yet. So it's a concept okay. that, um, you know, like you love yourself just because like like just cause you know yes. and i think it's a foundation that is very important so okay so if you look at yourself like a table right so it's a table and then you have the legs so i feel like self love is the foundation that you you must have so as a person right let's say the table you have um your friends keeping you afloat your family your career maybe your money but all these things are temporary. Maybe you might say that, okay, your family will always be there for you, which I'm sure is true. But, mm-hmm. you know, like what if someone, okay, touch wood, or if like someone dies or someone has to move, move away to a different country. So, mm-hmm. yeah, all these things are, it's not for sure. But if you have yeah. self-love as a foundation to keep you up and keep you going, that is something that will always be there and you can 100% rely on it because it comes from yourself, you know? So, yeah, yeah, what do you think, Chris? I generally agree with it. And that I do think that self-love, it should be unconditional. Like, yeah. it, it should be based on our achievements. It should be just like, you know, accepting, accepting yourself for who you are mm-hmm. and trying to keep yourself happy and, and, and not making yourself become um, pressurized by others and so on. It's basically just being comfortable with yourself. I, I think that's yeah. how I find self-love. Like, it is... It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a really broad topic and lots of people have different interpretations of what that means. And I think that that is the reason why we have come up with today's, uh, we've come up with this topic as today's yeah. discussion. Um, do you think that self-esteem plays a very like, important part in self-love? Like, like, do, you, do you find that a core part of like, self-love? Do I find self-love being a core part of self-esteem? Uh, no, self-esteem being the, a core factor, a core aspect of self-love. Sorry, um, so I think that um, they're very much linked, I guess, but at the same, um, 
very much linked but at the same time very much different so like self-esteem is the confidence in yourself right so um how confident are you of yourself in terms of your own worth your own abilities and self-respect and that would tend to go hand in hand with self-love i would say but at the same time you can have um a low Mm self-esteem but also have a self-love you might not be as confident in your abilities but you have some certain form of self-love you're still working on yourself you're still somewhat comfortable with yourself but not fully confident but at the same time you can also say um i have high self-esteem but no self-love which tends to be the negative aspect like the neg i would say the negative scenario so i guess it's it's kind of hard i would say i can't really tell you self-esteem is self-love like because of self-love or self-love is because of self-esteem if that makes sense um, the point you're making is kind of like, um, you know, um, some people who have really high self-esteem might also be going through their own problems and troubles with regard to self-love. So it's very hard to say that um, yes. it, it's not a proportional like, graph. Like, I mean, like, it's not that just because you have self-love, you have high self-esteem or that yeah. because you have low self-esteem, you do not have a high level of self-love, I guess. Yeah, it's true. Um, yeah. I think I think I guess like one important thing to note as well is that um, self love. I'm just gonna bring in like self care as well. So self love is very different from self care as well because I feel like that so the fad nowadays. A lot of people talk about self care. Wow, um, I'm gonna have a self care day, a me day. I'm gonna for girls maybe it could be I'm gonna be in a bathtub with candles and like music and ha- eating what I like. Or for guys it could be oh I'm gonna buy that PS4 game. Right, and that is a certain form of self care, but I would say that um, it's very different as well because self care is temporary. It it's things that you do to make yourself better, to make yourself feel better on certain days. But in essence, um, the moment once the moment you stop doing all of these things, right, it really tests whether you have self love or not. Because the moment you stop doing all of these things, right, how comfortable are you with yourself? You might feel good when you're in that bathtub, but the moment you leave that bathtub, you know, are you comfortable with yourself? Are you happy with yourself? So I feel like um, all these things are very important things to think about. Yeah, I think, so I I recently just shared like this article. It's not really an article, it's like a Facebook post by like someone like, I I don't remember (laughs) who it's from, but like credits to that person. So I've sent sent it to Huyen and Chris when we were discussing for this topic. So I think they, this person, like, she pointed out very good points about self-love, where what we always see as self-love is, yeah, like, like Huyen said, maybe, like, you know, people post on Instagram, like, oh, I'm having, like, a bu- bubble bath today or, like, a spa day, and then they, like, hashtag self-love or whatever. So she said that self-love, okay, first of all, self-love is not about um, treating your day uh, treating yourself with a day as, at a spa or buying yourself that dress that you really wanted. It's, it's not the like, the, these things that people really look upon as self-love, but it's more of the ugly things where it is maybe sweating yourself out du- during a workout or it's saying no to toxic relationships or getting yourself out of a situation that is bad for you. So it's, it's not about, um, self-love is not about escaping your life uh, escaping what you're experiencing um in your life by like having like if let's say you have a busy day at work it's not you know suddenly you go to a spa and suddenly everything is good again it's not that but it's about building a life that you don't have to regularly escape from so talking about what um what people for the lack of self-love what what people do to make up for it maybe we have like um relationships we have um, buying consumer products. So I think talking about relationships, right? Maybe you, you yourself, you don't love yourself, but your happiness relies on how much someone loves you. So for example, um, your boyfriend, maybe like you have, you, you are lacking of self-love, but you depend on your boyfriend to love you that much. So what happens if your boyfriend leaves you, you know, or like belonging? So how people, 
how people buy consumer products to make up to cover up what you're lacking, right? So, for example, actually, this is, this is, I think, uh, okay, I'm going to sound like a nerd right now, but it's like a psychology study. It's called Why the Self is Empty, if you guys want to read up on that. So, it's about how um, consumers, right, uh, con- consumer mm-hmm. products, how they advertise their products. They put a personality into that product so that people who like that personality want to buy it to cover up what they're lacking. So, for example, if let's say... Um, they are selling like a perfume and then they market it as, oh, you know, it makes you, okay, this is probably quite a trash example, but um, it makes you have a certain personality maybe. And then you buy this product and all of these products that you consume around you, you think that those products carry your identity. But the problem is that you have to have your own identity and you have to love your, yourself without any of these products. So yep. basically, when you're naked in the bathroom, you still have to love yourself without your expensive um, earrings or jewelry or gowns and yeah. all that. So, yeah, maybe Huya, what do you think about that? I think yeah, that's um like a really good point. So like um especially like the part where you talk about um self love being ugly because I think <laughs> for you to really fully understand yourself to really um to really reflect and understand and love yourself, you have, you really do have to go through all of these ugly things, so to speak. You have to um, be, you have to go through um, the nights where you reflect on yourself, reflect on your flaws, confront your flaws, think about um, the things that you do not like about yourself, but that is okay, right? How do I fix this to improve myself? Not to, not to get accepted, but to improve myself. I think, um, so in, I do like that part where you say it's ugly because um, for some, self-love could be, um, I don't know, one night of crying. It could be crying like super badly and, mm-hmm. and reflecting on what you have done wrong, but it is the process of crying and, and reflecting and improving and getting over that that is a very very tough process that many of us probably are not there yet or probably struggle through right to get self-love yeah so it's basically like making yourself understand like your flaws and all that and trying to fix it for yourself yeah so the reasoning behind fixing things behind improving things is very important like are you are you fixing yourself are you, are you losing that weight or are you getting that that a grade that first class in university because you want to or because or because you want to be accepted and to be thought highly upon of by other people yeah so i think that this basically leads us to the question of like the fundamental question of like peer pressure right i think mm-hmm. a lot of people attempt to fix themselves like fix their flaws um, even if they're not necessarily flaws, because they feel pressurized by others. They, they feel like they need to conform to what others expect of them. So do you think that like peer pressure, for instance, and even like conforming to others, um, kind of like damages um, self-love? I think for sure, like pressure. I, I would say um, I would include um, pressure, not just peer pressure, but pressure from your parents, your friends, okay. and, and yourself as well. So all of this really does damage self-love because we live in a society where we have certain levels of what is accepted, what is the norm, and what we need to achieve to be successful, so to speak, right? So that, that puts pressure on all of us, on our parents, to make sure that we do well, to make sure that we succeed, um, that puts pressure on our friends, all right? Mm-hmm. Because they think that this is the norm, this is what they have to do, and hence that these are the friends that they should be friends with as well, and that puts pressure on us, right? Like, that, um, and, and that makes us think that, you know, oh, oh I need to do this, 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 A, mm-hmm. B, C, D, E, to be yeah. successful, right? And it definitely, definitely does not help, right? Based on, um, like with how 
digital that we um, our world is right now, right, with social media, for example. So social media doesn't make it any better because every day we look through our feeds, our Insta feeds, and we look at um, people who are living the life, so to speak, right? And that really puts a lot of pressure and that perpetuates society's um, level of acceptance and level of, like, success that is just going to make us feel bad about ourselves, I guess. So... Yeah, it really, 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 yeah. I guess, affects it. Yeah, I think I think um, it's good that you pointed out social media because I feel yeah. like social media is like one of the, one possibly one of the biggest like harm towards the development of self-love mm-hmm. because yes. we always compare to ourselves. So what we see on social media is basically the highlight reel of everyone's life. So we compare yeah. it to... Um, you know, someone's good hair day or when someone feels good about themselves, when they feel that they look good on the day, they take a picture of themselves and they post it. Or maybe if they are traveling, they post like, you know, beautiful pictures of like sceneries and stuff. So basically what we see on social media is the high parts of everyone's lives. And what we're doing is we are taking those highlight reels and we are comparing it to our everyday life, which is, which consists of you know, sitting at home in our hobo clothes or like bad hair day and like, yeah, yeah I, th- I didn't get, you guys get what I mean, right? So it's like, yes. no. people only post the good okay. stuff, which is why we shouldn't compare our everyday life to to the good stuff that people post. And personally, like, I, I do fall into that trap as well because I am yeah. quite active on social media, more active than I feel I should be. So, yeah, so that is about social media. And also one more thing that, uh, Personally, I feel that harms my journey towards self-love is my validation-seeking behavior. So, mm-hmm. for example, right, I, I want people to like me. Basically, what I think of myself is what people think of me. So, for example, yes. I'm talking to a group of 10 people, right? And nine people love to listen to what I say. But there's this one person who, you know, doesn't seem to be amused, doesn't seem to be entertained by what I'm saying, for example. Mm-hmm. And I will choose to focus all of my attention on that one person instead of focusing on the other nine people who are actually enjoying what, what I have to say, you know. So I feel like that is bad and there's something that I have to work on because why do I, why do I view myself in the, way that people view, in the way that people view myself? And more often than not, I focus on, you know, the negative parts of it, so... Yeah. Yeah, I think that some, some people might think that, like, for instance, uh, you, I mean, if you look at it from another perspective, some could argue that um, the fact that you're trying to appeal to that one person who might not necessarily like you is it could be like some people could view it as like your way of trying to approach more people, like trying to make yourself uh, more, um, trying to make yourself more um, like you know make people comfortable around you, for example. So that could potentially that could possibly be a good thing as well, but like. It does lead to it does lead to a lot of problems if that it kind of like makes you not focus on yourself because mm-hmm. you can look at it yeah. in two ways basically one way of looking at it is that you know you're trying to appeal to everybody which is a positive aspect that you care about what people think but yeah it clearly becomes a bad thing if it, that really affects you it yeah. makes you focus on something that's not supposed to be a priority if you get what I mean yes yeah so that's like a fine line that's what you're saying so there's a fine uh, line being. Yes between um, doing things to make sure that um, everyone is comfortable, to make yep. sure that everyone is accept, like, comfortable with the situation and doing things um, to make that one person kind of accept you and, that, and make, causing that to affect yourself because you have insecurities. Like, oh, why does that person not like me? Am I not good enough? That kind of thing. So, which is very bad, for sure. Yeah, um, so I think that the- the moment that these things start to like affect you, like make the moment like such instances make you feel that you're not good enough or that um, where you start to question, are you lacking something um, non-stop? I think that is when it is a problem and it could be detrimental to your self-love. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I think, raising the point of validation, seeking behavior is actually really yes. good. Because a I lot think, of us realize that we have to oh, problem. Sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Um, no, I think that really does um, link back to social media again, like just mm-hmm. like what we discussed just now. So um, it's really, um, social media has really damaged um, like 
our thoughts in terms of pressure and, and mm-hmm. validation seeking behavior it perpetuates all of these things so like I, I like sorry I'll just bring bring back what Melissa said about um, highlight reels right so I like the part where she talked about how ev- most of the time everything that everyone posts on social media is the highlights of their life the highs that because no one's going to post their lows right but the funny thing is that not a lot of people realize is that um, a lot of the times these highs that we see may not actually be true. It may not actually be that person's high, so to speak. That person could actually just be faking their holiday, their, oh, wow, their, their super expensive holiday just for the gram, as they like to say, just for validation-seeking behavior. So, so I think um, we need to be very careful about how we use social media, about how we treat social media. Um, we need to be able to recognize the signs that um, as we're going through social media on whether certain um, feeds or certain accounts are making us question ourselves and yeah. whether they're making us feel bad or not. Because, you know, it's no problem if we see someone else's um, luxurious feet, so to speak, and, and that's cool. And if that doesn't affect you, then that's totally cool. But you need to be, definitely take note of how that is affecting you personally. Yeah, I think. Um, okay. Oh, yeah, yes. Yeah. Um, so I think bringing bringing up social media is like a very good point, and I think it's very complex. This problem is very complex, and it could probably be like another like entire podcast on its own. But yeah. I think bringing it back to our topic today, which is self love, right? I'm very interested to know what Chris thinks about it because I think it's very often that we that females talk about it like girls are like oh self-love and stuff but it's very rare to get guys to talk about what self-love means to you so yeah what do you think well like i said in the beginning like i i feel self-love as something that it's kind of like being comfortable with yourself i, I think that the problem that that the, the, the reason why this topic is often associated with women and girls is because i think that perhaps um like um females do think about such things more often than guys um, I, I dare say that guys actually do think about these things like often like very often like for instance like trying to have like a good appearance for instance is not necessarily something that only girls um, focus on because guys as well want to look as good as they can yeah I think that the, the only I think that one of the reasons why this is not a topic that uh, really like resonates with a lot of guys is probably because it just it's not something that we often think about I think that very often these things is like, we just brush it aside, if you get what I mean. Mm-hmm. Actually, I think that for most guys, if they actually sit down and look at, this, the, at these issues, I think that they'll realize that they do have a lot of reflection to do about these kind of things. So I, I think that it's about reflection. And I think that it's also yeah. about the openness of talking about this. Because yeah. like I said, there's always an association that like this feeling of not feeling good enough is often associated with girls. And a lot of guys just feel that it's not something that we should talk about. I think it, it, it's more of like a, a kind of thing that's not associated with masculinity, for instance. So, but I, I do think that guys themselves should actually consider such things because it's definitely something that runs in their heads, in their minds, and they should think about it. Like for me, so like back to the point of what do I think about? Um, do I think about this question of like self-love? Absolutely. I do think about these things every now and then. But if I, were, if I were to be very honest, um, it's not something that really affects me. I don't put in a lot of thought into it. But at times, it does, it does affect me at times. And I think that, for instance, it's, I think like the point that Mel raised about um, self-validating behavior, I think that I do have that, for instance. I do have this desire of wanting people to like me. So at times when I realize that I'm not doing that well in that regard, mm-hmm affected by it as well so yes definitely so i think that most importantly i think that self-love for me it means being comfortable with yourself like not having to conform to others yeah so i just, think yeah sorry go ahead no i was just gonna say yeah it's a very very um normal it's normal behavior to be honest be- a very yeah, think- speaking behavior very normal and something that all of us um go through like yeah, yeah i think that most people just want to be like because it's mm-hmm. really to have a life when you know for a fact a lot of people don't like you so in, mm-hmm. in that aspect i don't think it's wrong for people to want to be liked but i think yeah. that it is a problem when 
it really affects you when it starts to bother what you're doing, especially when yes. especially when you have a life that that's already really well. You have like lots of people who care about you, lots of people love you, but you still just keep on wanting to appeal to that minority who who, who don't. That's when yes. it becomes. Problematic. It's it's okay to um, want people to like you, but not at the risk of yourself having insecurities and doubts about yeah. your own worth. That's when yeah. things get bad. Yeah. So just, yeah. To, to move on further, then, like, I, um, let's talk about how people make up for this lack of like self love. Like, do you have any views on perhaps say maybe relationships, um, belongings, or even physical appearance? Um. um yeah, go ahead. Oh, wait, you go first. Okay. Oh my god, I really need to sneeze, but it's not coming out. <laughs> okay, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, I think I did um, mention my part on that about relationships and belongings, but um, yeah, I think maybe you can go ahead first. Yeah, I think... Uh, um, yeah, sorry, go ahead, yeah. Um, wait, when you say make up for it, do you mean like to hide it or to... Yeah, to, to, to hide it or make themselves feel better and whatnot. Like we've got... Um, on like um say belongings and all that perhaps what is your take on like maybe stuff like you know plastic surgery um relationships and all that like do you think that this is do you think that such measures are something that people actually take um i guess like um a lot of us nowadays we like or some of us we tend to focus on um like materialistic materialistic stuff and like relationship um to try and make up for our lack of self-worth or self self-love right so i think that's kind of really bad i would say i think um talking about what chris said just now right um mm-hmm. i think this again could probably be another podcast on its own but like i think self-love for guys is very different and it's not very commonly uh, touched upon because like it doesn't come from when we say self love, we connect it to like oh you know like like what we said just now, social media, uh, looking mm. pretty and all that. Um, guys, I think for guys, it's probably more on like um, masculinity comparison comparison with between like oh you know this guy plays like basketball and I don't, and this guy goes to the gym, and when this guy talks, everyone listens to him. So I think that is the kind of things that guys tend to compare themselves with mm. and it's not very regularly Absolutely. talked about yeah mm. Absolutely. Oh I, 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 think it's, I think it's more subtle for guys i think it's it's not i think i i yeah. hate that word masculinity <laughs> i have to admit because like we use it all the time right to compare men like oh man needs to be masculine macho and everything which is so wrong because um nowadays when when we think about like i think it's 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 awful for that like, guys have to be put to that level of standard as well of masculinity having mm-hmm. to be um forced to be um oh muscular and sporty and and like look tough and everything with no feelings which is so like which is honestly really unhealthy for a guy so like masculinity should just be i, sh- I don't know man it just shouldn't be a word <laughs> because what is what is masculinity really, honestly? It's, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We, we're going to invite you again for like a topic on masculinity. Oh but my anyway. gosh. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I think that, yeah, I think it, it, it's just like there's a lot of like connotations that has been associated mm. with masculinity. So yeah. a lot of guys, they do face troubles and difficulties in meeting um, such standards, I think. And back to the topic of self-love that definitely affects their self-love i think it yes, definitely affects for sure. it definitely does because like we're all human and guys have their own feelings as well yeah. and feel that they cannot meet, meet such standards they do definitely get affected by it. I, I think that which is why like this topic is actually really crucial for guys to discuss amongst themselves as well or if they're not mm-hmm. comfortable discuss it with people they should at least reflect on it um in their own time if you get what i mean yeah yeah. Um, okay, I think we're running out of time. I don't know if we're... Okay, so I'll, I'll just bring this up very quickly, which is actually a very very con- controversial topic. But maybe, okay, what, what do you guys think about plastic surgery? You know, self-alteration to make yourself look better. So mm-hmm. my thing on that, I was just discussing it with 
hair increase before this. So my take on plastic surgery is that it has a very bad stigma against it, where yeah. people like look badly upon it. And but for me, like I don't see how it's any different than you know working out to maybe look slimmer or something. So you don't like a part of yourself and you want to change it. And yeah, I feel I feel it's no different. Maybe plastic surgery can be seen as a shortcut, possibly. But I feel like you know you still have to pay for plastic surgery. Where do you get that money from? You still work for the money. So yeah, but linking it back to self love, right? So I don't feel that plastic surgery is, is wrong, but or or yeah. like workouts for that matter. But I feel like you should accept yourself before you do the plastic surgery. And you're not changing yourself because you hate that part of yourself. So, for example, if I don't like my nose, right, I shouldn't go and get it altered so that I'll like how I look more after the surgery. Mm-hmm. Because I feel that after the surgery, you have like a hundred more things to hide. You know, yeah. you'll be hiding your yeah. old pictures. You'll be hiding the fact that that Definitely, you did yeah. plastic surgery. Mm-hmm. So, I think the thing that you should think about is. Um, you should accept yourself before the plastic surgery. You should so I should learn how to love my nose, and I know that sounds very weird. Okay, but I should learn how to <laughs> yes, love. That. Yeah, I should learn how to love my nose, and I accept my nose. But I feel like I like it better this way, so I change. So I change it, but then I won't hide mm. how my nose looks before that, and I won't hide the fact that. I did plastic surgery. The same thing goes with like workout, right? Maybe you don't like your tummy, and then you, but then you accept your tummy and you work, you work to burn it away, and you're not shy to admit that. Oh, you know, I used to look like this before, but I worked for it and yeah. and reach this result, and this is how I look today. So yeah, what do you think about it, Huyen? So then, like, um, then I really think that like. Plastic. It depends on the reasons behind the plastic surgery, right? So, is it solely um because you want to fit in, you want to be society's version of what's hot, or to be accepted, or is it because there's something that is preventing you from living your life to the best quality that you can, from being happy, right? So, overall, I think plastic surgery shouldn't be explicitly encouraged. I would say, I mean, it shouldn't be encouraged because once you encourage it, it becomes the new norm. It becomes normal to change anything you don't like about yourself. So then that kind of damages self-love because then that damages your self-esteem as well. Because like you said, after um, you do um, plastic surgery, you're going to have more problems with yourself. I mean, you're going to have more insecurities. But then at the same time, right, I think plastic surgery shouldn't be discouraged or should, you shouldn't be, there shouldn't be a stigma among um people who do plastic surgery because they, you don't know the reasons why they do the plastic surgery you don't maybe they could be yeah. doing it because they improve their quality of life you know mm-hmm. yeah so but i don't think that plastic surgery is something that people should like frown yeah. upon I, I think that you know it's a matter of personal choice like if you feel that you need it for whatever reason yeah. you shouldn't be stopped from doing it but i do think that like before you decide to take that step of having a plastic surgery um you should really put a lot of thought into it and you should ask yourself, um, will that plastic surgery actually help you resolve whatever issues that you're facing, whatever yeah. unhappiness that you're facing? Because if you don't address that question, it could become a cycle where you just keep on doing it again and again and again, which could become problematic, not, not just in terms of like morality and whatnot, because I, I don't necessarily think that there's a question about morals with regard to that. But I think it's more of like other aspects, such as like your own personal issues, such as like finance and all that, because it's going to be very very costly so i think that you know if people want to do plastic surgery um they should be allowed to do it um yes. because they know what's best for themselves and if that is how they like to control self-help uh self-love then they should be allowed to do it yeah for sure way of self-love and if plastic surgery is one of it they should be allowed to do it but of course a lot of thought must be put into it that, that's my take on it I really like that point that Chris made, right? So leading on from that, right, about how he said um, it really depends on the reasons why you do plastic surgery, you know, and I think it's also really important to focus on um, working out and healthy diets as well because Mm -hmm. there's a trend right now um, among all of us that's it, um, where working out and healthy diets is the new in thing. It's the new um, thing that everyone is doing to lose weight and everything, right? But I think one thing we need to focus on 
right, is the reasons behind you wanting to work out and eat healthily. Is it because you want to be healthy and stronger, you know, or is it because you want to lose weight to look hot or you, because you don't like how you look to be accepted? Because both of these things, right, um, I mean, there's a very fine line behind these things, right? Working out on healthy diets to lose weight, to be healthy or to be accepted. Because um, the second one, the second scenario is really, really damaging to self-love and self-worth and our self-esteem. Because in the end, at the end of the day, right, it just perpetuates validation-seeking behavior. It just perpetuates our insecurities and our doubts about, you know, ourselves. And it really, at the end of the day, that's not good mental health behavior, really. So, like, overall, right, to me, if you choose to do plastic surgery or if you don't, if you choose to work out and have a diet or if you don't, right, it really doesn't matter in, a, in the long run. If what matters is as you are happy and comfortable yeah. with yourself. Definitely. Yeah. I think that's a good point where, like, I think, like, what like to sum up what we said say is like finding the right reasons to do something so yeah. to just wrap up this whole podcast maybe we can just talk about how we can either start this journey towards building self-love or how to continue it and i think different people would do this in very di- many different ways because self-love mm-hmm. is such a subjective thing so yeah, for sure. me i think it's about finding quiet time and properly taking time to uh, understand yourself, discover yourself, and know what goes on in your mind because you can't love something that you don't know. So yeah, maybe Chris, what do you think about how you can build this self love? Well, I think that quiet time is really important in like building self love. Um, I think that I have sufficient quiet time. I think because there are times when I just spend most. Uh, there are times when I just like stay on my own and then I just like do my own thing without being bothered by other people. So that's a yeah. very, that's one of the, one of, one of the ways in which I kind of like refresh myself feel because it feels good after like having time alone. But I do think that support systems are very important in this process of like self love because, you know, our support system doesn't necessarily have to be just family, but it also as like friends because we all have friends in which our friendships are built on different things. Like one group of friends can be built on like more of just like, um, um, talking about yourself and all that, uh, giving lots of like support to each other. Whereas another friendship could be more, I should say, more jovial in the sense that you're often like teasing each other, you're laughing with each other and all that. But I think that when you're feeling down, like very often our self-love is really impaired when you're feeling down or when, when we've had a really bad day or a tough time. So this is when our support system comes in. We, we need to like go to people to actually talk to, express um, our problems, and then yeah. they can tell us, they can give us advice. But in that regard, it's very important to know who are the right support system for such circumstances, because you do not want to go, for instance, like the friends in which you have that you're often like laughing with them and all that, they might not necessarily be the support system that you need, because they might not necessarily understand, because the friendship is based on, um, say, I'm teasing each other, laughter and all that. So you don't necessarily want to go to that group of friends to, to seek help with, to help with your process of self-love. But instead, you should rather go towards another group of friends that you feel that you can trust to tell your problems. So I'm not, I'm not saying that you only need, you can only have like a, a group of friends that are more, that's more serious about these kind of things. But I think that what's important is that you need to know who to go to to seek help because you don't want to be in a situation in which the people that you care about, the people that you love, end up making things harder for you. And that could really make self-love an even harder process, which is already difficult. So I think yeah, that sure. social support is really important. But choosing who, is the, who are the right people to seek support from in, in, in caring for yourself is fundamentally important. Yeah, for sure. Having a strong and supportive support system is very important like um especially um during your quiet times as well you need to i mean quiet time is really good as well and but you need to also re- make sure that that quiet time is beneficial for you and that quiet time is not making you worse so yeah. if you think it's making you worse then you should definitely seek out your support system 
and your support system can be anyone, right? Like you said, it could be your family, your friends. It could be the group that makes you happy. It could be the group that, you know, another group, for example, that you are more com- slightly more comfortable talking to. I think for me, though, um, in addition to all of these things, right, I would say um, what's important is also treating yourself better. Mm-hmm. Um, talking to yourself better. Um, thinking to yourself better. You know, you need to um, have a more positive tone, more positive... Um, yeah, more positive tone to um, the things that you do, right? To talking to yourself, so to speak. I don't mean like speaking out loud, but like just the thoughts that we have, everyday thoughts, um, things that we might not even realize. So what I mean by treating yourself better and talking to yourself better is that um, don't not bashing up yourself for things that you might not have done so well or things that might not necessarily be in your in your control, right? Yep. You want to definitely make sure that um, you, you acknowledge, let's say, you acknowledge the things that you have done wrongly, for example, and you say that's okay. So, so basically, treating yourself is better is knowing that, oh, I messed up at ABCD, for example, that that is okay, right? What can I do next time to improve? So it's not bashing yourself up and saying, oh, no, I'm, I'm so bad. Um, I didn't get that A. I'm, I'm such a bad student, right? It's more of, oh, I didn't get that A, right? But I want that A. And how am I going to work towards that? It's okay. I will work. I'll, I'll improve next time. We need to be able to understand that not everything goes our way. And at times, very often, it's not even because of our flaws. Yeah, and hey, messing up is okay. That's part of life. Mm -hmm. It's part of, you know, the whole journey of improvement. It's fine. Yeah, I think just to sum this all up, right? So I think Mm -hmm. we've gotten quite deep into this topic and I'll try try my best to like just summarize what we went through. So I think self-love is, from what we discussed, self-love is about um, loving yourself without comparing yourself to other people, um, accepting yourself and knowing yourself. And it's about building yourself a life that you don't have to regularly run away from. And even mm-hmm. though that, that involves, you know, doing the ugly things. So, and yeah. how, how we can um, build towards, you know, you should, you can accept that, okay, maybe I'm not there yet towards my journey of self-love, but we can always build upon uh, what we started. So maybe you are, you are at maybe like 5% of your self-love. Mm-hmm. So you can try many different things to help to build it to 100%. And it doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be 100%. You could, you could settle with 80 maybe. So, you know, you just do whatever you want. It's very subjective. But as long as, you know, it keeps you going and it keeps you happy. So, yeah. So we've come to, this, uh, to the end of this episode. Thank you, Huyen, mm-hmm. for spending your time Thank with us. You. Thank you. Thank you for Thank spending you, your time Emily. with us. Uh, yeah, talking about this topic. And we hope to have you again in our next sessions. So next we ha- Yeah. <laughs> so, so we have new content out every Friday. And we are on Facebook and Instagram at Sound On Podcasting. And we're also on YouTube. So, yes. yeah. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe, guys. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you.